the just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar, planted in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. O God, you made your saints obey the gospel as an example for many. Grant, we beseech you, that we may imitate the cheerful goodness and devout piety of the blessed Abbot Seard. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Consider this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, without sadness or compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, he scatters abroad, he gives to the poor, his righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You are being enriched in every way for all generosity, which through us produces thanksgiving to God. The word of the Lord. Those who sow in tears will reap with cries of joy. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, then we thought we were dreaming. Our mouths were filled with laughter, our tongues sang for joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord had done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us. Oh, how happy we were. Restore again our fortunes, Lord, like the dry stream beds of the Negev. Those who sow in tears will reap with cries of joy. Those who go forth weeping, carrying sacks of seed, will return with cries of joy, carrying their bundled sheaves. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke.
At that time, Jesus said to his disciples, Do not be afraid any longer, little flock, for your Father is pleased to give you the kingdom. Sell your belongings and give alms. Provide money bags for yourselves that do not wear out, an inexhaustible treasure in heaven that no thief can reach nor moth destroy. For where your treasure is, there also will be your heart. The Gospel of the Lord. When you enter the Abbey, St. Michael's Abbey, or any religious order, in the first few years are something comparable to a boot camp. It's you are, you say, the lowest on the totem pole. Even the church says in the documents about the novitiate, these are the first couple years of religious life, that they are a time of testing, a testing of the vocation of the young seminarian or the young sister that enters the convent. And this is very true at St. Michael's Abbey. For those first two years that I entered in the novitiate, you are given the most undesirable jobs in the abbey, the most menial jobs. And so you spend much time cleaning all kinds of different things. And while the, there's one priest that's put in charge, and so sometimes he's helping you out, he's mainly telling you what you're supposed to do, but the other priests that have already been through it, are doing other things. Of course, preparing for many masses or their classes or different things. And then the seminarians are busy with the menial labor. And my job every Friday, one of the jobs I had was to clean the novitiate. And so sometimes, not only did I not have another priest there to help me, but sometimes it was hard to find another seminarian. So I was cleaning the whole building where all the seminarians lived where by myself. Now, when the church or when our order speaks of the saint that we celebrate today, Saint Siard, now he was an abbot of a monastery in Germany called Mary's Garden. And it speaks as Saint Siard that even though he was the abbot. He was, you might say, at the top of the hierarchy in the monastery that St. Siard would still go and work with the novices, that he was so humble, he was so devout that he strove to even to serve to help those on the lowest of the totem pole. So I kind of imagine that St. Siard would have been right there by my side cleaning the novitiate, cleaning all those toilets so many times every Friday. If St. Siard was my abbot, he would have been there. I'm sure my abbot, Abbot Eugene, probably was to just, he was, he's so busy building the new abbey. But, so St. Siard was known for his humility, but he was also known for his spirit of prayer. And this is something that probably helped him that, so that he was able to serve those and help those that were the lowest on the totem pole, those poor novices, is that it said that he maintained a spirit of prayer even in the midst of his daily labors, that he said he had a great devotion to, this, to Martha and Mary, and we're accustomed to the scene of Martha and Mary that Jesus is at their home, and Martha is busy about many things, trying to feed our Lord, to serve Him, but Mary is there at His feet. And Martha asks our Lord, why don't you tell her to help me? And she said, well, she has chosen the better part. But it says that St. Siard, in his devotion to Martha and Mary, he strove to serve our Lord but also to remain united to him in prayer, to not forget, even in the midst of his busy day and the many tasks that he had, that his ultimate goal 
was union with Christ, even in the midst of his labors. It says this, He learned to be like Martha, but his work did not distract him from that one necessary thing, namely, being like Mary, listening, meditating, loving the Lord Jesus alone, from whom the soul necessarily receives both life and rest. And so even when the conferers were working in the fields, gathering the harvest, he was also there, working diligently, collecting the sheaves. Yet he was absorbed in prayer, even in the midst of labor. They were like Martha by working with their hands, but also like Mary. They also had time for prayer, attending to that one necessary thing to know love and possess the Lord Jesus and thirst after him with a profound desire. Let us ask St. Siar to intercede for us that we might imitate his humility and his devotion to prayer even in the midst of a busy day. St. Siar, pray for us. Please stand. Grateful for God's goodness, let us now bring our prayers before Him. For the leaders of the church, may the gifts of the Holy Spirit help them in faithfully guiding their people. Let us pray to the Lord. <clears throat> for all nations and peoples, may the Lord's name be proclaimed throughout the world and His mercy made manifest to all who call upon Him. Let us pray to the Lord. For all of us gathered here in this holy place, and especially for Reina Regal and her family, for whom this Mass is being offered, may the Spirit give us a heart and voice to bless the Lord at all times and give Him glory. Let us pray to the Lord. For the souls of the faithful departed, may they soon be welcomed to the heavenly banquet. Let us pray to the Lord. God of love, we bring these prayers before you, confident that you will hear and answer them. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, Lord, the gifts we bring. May our offerings be transformed into the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who passed through death to the joys of everlasting life and who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for in the marvelous confession of your saints, you make your church fruitful with strength ever new and offer us sure signs of your love and that your saving mysteries may be fulfilled. Their great example lends us courage. Their fervent prayers sustain us in all we do. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exultation we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more, giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy we be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. <clears throat> Lord, we have been taught by your word and nourished by your heavenly bread. For this we give you thanks, and we ask that we may serve you worthily through our unfailing love for each other, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. <clears throat> may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. Amen. Thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Immaculate Mary, your praises we sing. You pray now in splendor with Jesus our King. Amen. 